unlocking the full value of decentralized technology. This is the mission of Parity Technologies. They're the key technical contributor to Polkadot, a platform that's redefining Web3. I think Web3 and the blockchain movement really provides a tool to bring some of the trustworthiness back and it may allow our societies and communities to work better. Today, we're joined by Bjorn Wagner, CEO of Parity Technologies, and Pierre Aubert, VP of Engineering. We'll dive into how Parity is empowering developers, enterprises, and communities worldwide in the world of Web3. So first of all, welcome Bjorn and Pierre to wonderful and beautiful Davos. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. Thanks for having us. Let's start with you, Bjorn. There's been a lot of talk about Web3 recently. So why don't you start and just explain to us, is Polkadot really a new entrant to this conversation? Not at all. <laughs> um, Polkadot, work on Polkadot actually started uh, nearly eight years ago. And uh, our company, Parity Technologies, is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Some of our team, notably my co-founder, Dr. Gavin Wood, um, played a very key role in creating Ethereum, one of the first and most notable blockchain networks out there. And I would say over the lifetime of Polkadot, we've collaborated with um, some of the world's largest and most respected institutions, you know, across a, a very wide range of sectors. Um, these include international NGOs like the United Nations World Food Programme, um, as well as um, gaming giants like Mythical Games, um, supporting gaming titles such as NFL Rivals or FIFA's um, official upcoming fantasy game for the next World Cup. So really, it sounds like they're a veteran in the Web3 world. I think it's fair to say that we are, we are a legacy player in, in our industry, right? And we've, we've really navigated over these many years so many industry cycles, right? Both the hype cycles as well as uh, the very strong downturns. downturns. But we are still here. And I, I think really think we are stronger than ever here. And um, I look ahead into 2025 as our most ambitious year, right? both from a technological perspective with upgrades coming, new partnerships, as well as our ever-growing community. And Pierre, over to you. It's a really fitting place that we're having this conversation in Switzerland, which is home to, of course, a very important blockchain hub itself. How would you compare yourself to all the many other projects that are out there in the blockchain world? So partly because we have been here for a long time, like we have now a very mature product that can scale and match the need of large companies. And we can partner with them and build stuff together, um, not just one, but many companies. And that's a conclusion of a lot of effort and innovation over the years to build a platform that could scale, uh, that could be resilient, and at the same time is very secure and decentralized. So because of that, I think we are one of the first blockchains that can claim to be really decentralized and powerful enough to support large companies. So to summarize, at the moment, you're really providing the infrastructure to Web3 and trying to bring these projects to life. What does that involve? Can you give us the very short and sweet version? I can compare to the cloud business. Everybody knows about the cloud. So we are like an infrastructure provider, which looks more like what Google or Amazon are doing. And on top of us, a lot of companies are building services and that's the application that people are using. So we are the platform, the substrate, if you want, that people are using to deploy the services and applications. And let's talk about Polkadot. They are one of the most innovative platforms in Web3, and you are, of course, supporting them at Parity. Tell us, do they have a long-term vision? And if so, what does that look like? Abs absolutely. And I think understanding that um, long-term vision is really key to both grasping um, what we're working towards too, in the short term, as well as for the long haul, right? I'd like, if you ask me how to express this, right? I would say Polkadot's vision is really, um, is really fulfilling the true potential of Web3, right? Um, and, you know, th that's, that's, a, that's a whole lot here, right? But if we look at 
today, right? I think more than ever, people from international organizations, small, large businesses to the everyday internet user really recognizes the need that we need to shift away from the current centralized internet, right? That's dominated by a handful of large platforms in private hands, mostly. And, you know, I think there's clear demand for something that replaces that, right? While still delivering us the utility and functionality that we are used to, but under a different paradigm. Now, um, and I think this demand is seen is people are asking for, you know, a much more democratized, decentralized internet, where users and businesses are much more in control of both their data as well as digital interactions. And that's really what we're heading towards to, and we've been headed towards to for the last 10 years, very steadfast. And I think one thing to, to the point of what we are doing different here is while in our industry you often see um, players chase short-term hypes, right? We've taken a very principled, methodical approach to it, right? Because, you know, um, this infrastructure needs to support the world for decades to come. And we cannot cut corners on this. So ultimately, you have a very long-term vision. Polkadot has a long-term vision. You're here to support that. I also want to mention they have a very interesting governance model. Maybe you could speak to that. How does it really benefit the community? So that's the most, I think, innovative aspect of Polkadot. The governance is given back to the people that own Polkadot. If you are a dot holder, you can vote. And that's very similar to uh, the Swiss democracy, for example. It's a direct democracy. Every time there is a change to the platform or a proposed change, people are voting and tell, yes, I agree or I don't. And that's very different from the normal world where a company takes decision for you. Your bank gives you an application, they change it. They are not asking you if you agree or not. In this new model, you can decide as a user if you want the change or not. Oh, so all these stakeholders have more of a say any dot holder can vote and that's a form of governance that i have never seen in other places and the bigger the platform the more democratic it is because it's spread across countries uh, whatever kind of diversity you want and it's much much harder to control a system like that it's also fully transparent everything is online you cannot make a change in private change is visible and this mix of like transparency on one side and everybody can vote is, I think, a very powerful way to govern how the system should change over time. So let's take a look ahead. You've already said that 2025 is going to be an incredibly exciting year. What are some of the developments that we should be looking out for for Polkadot? So, so we have a lot of technical uh, improvement, but I think the most like important things is to demonstrate and like the change which is coming is a professionalization of the platform. You can find courses, you can get professional services, you can build on top or you can ask a third party company to build for you. And this level of maturity is I think the largest change for 2025. It's bringing like the ability to scale and integrate a lot of companies even if they are not IT companies. So they can benefit from the web free technology and especially Polkadot without necessarily being uh, IT companies. Bjorn, let's uh, give you the last word. Do you think we are only at the starting point of Web3? I absolutely do. Um, and that has multiple reasons. Um, on one hand, I do think the necessary technology infrastructure and the tooling ecosystem um, hasn't quite been mature enough in, in, in past years, right, to support many of the, um, you know, use cases that had been ideated on it. That's on one hand, and we are getting to much more mature environment, right? On the other hand, you got to consider um, there's a massive paradigm shift involved in, or required, right, to really think through how to make use of that powerful technology. If you require people to change their mental model, right, that usually takes often longer than even developing the technology and maturing the technology. But I think we really get there. And we're like, 
One example, I think, strong you know, tailwinds that you're getting here is um, a topic that you also see um, here in Davos uh, these weeks, right? Which is the deterioration of the trust in institutions and authorities, right? Which we have seen growing and growing over the years. And I think there's such a clear need for, um, for something that brings back that trust, the trustworthiness that enables businesses, institutions and people to demonstrate their trustworthiness to each other. And I think Web3 and blockchain can play a major role in that. Well, there's lots to come in this area. Perhaps we'll have a very different conversation in five or ten years time. Thank you so much, Bjorn and Pierre, for joining us here in Davos. Thank you. Thanks for having us. As the blockchain industry continues to evolve, parity technologies is at the forefront of bringing Web3 projects to life. They want to pave the way for a future where blockchain supports both businesses and communities in transformative ways.